Hey guys, it's Jenny. Welcome back to the Bookworms, buddy. Today I am being a copycat. Hi guys, it is spook season and you all know by this point this is my favorite time of the year. Halloween is my favorite holiday and I love it. I just love this time of year so much. So this morning I was booktubing and I came across Amber's video over at Second Hand Reader. I will link to her below so go over there and comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, and she did a video today called 13 Top Recommended Books by Stephen King. She included um, short stories, novellas, you know, great novels, all that stuff. The point of this video is not so much to promote my favorite books, because I do have a top 10 that I did back in 2015. I can also link to that. Um, I want it to be more about books that I recommend. So I am going to do exactly what Amber did, and it's going to be 13 of my top recommended Stephen King books. And I tried to choose different ones from Amber, so it will give you more to choose from. So um, anyway, we were talking in comments and talking about how people say Stephen King is overrated and his books are overrated and... I don't feel that, you guys. And I guess maybe it's because, you know, I'm biased. I think probably all of the fan base for Stephen King is biased, you know, when we, when we say that. Because you really have to just jump in and just enjoy what he's writing. And I have, for the most part, enjoyed almost everything I have, I have read. And even the books that Amber recommended, I have enjoyed as well. So... I'm looking at this as kind of a collaboration between her video and my video and maybe you guys can find something in the mix and start your journey because I feel like you're never too old to start your journey into Stephen King's universe because it's just fantastic. I feel like he is like one of the greatest storytellers of our time and I just want to share my thoughts with that as Amber did. So, I'm going to follow suit as Amber did, and I am going to um, show you 13 recommended. I do have a top 10 favorite of Stephen King that I did in 2015. I can link that below, too, if you guys want to go watch that. So, any, anyway, without further ado, let's get going on this. The very first book, okay, I already lied because this is my number one favorite book ever, and I have to recommend it, not because it's my favorite book, but because it's worth recommending. I recommend this book to everybody. It by Stephen King. And there's more about this book to me than, you know, the plot and, and Pennywise. It's the characters that really do it for me in this book. There's so many great characters. If I had to choose between, we'll say two characters, it would be between Ben and Richie as two of my favorite. I probably would Ben would probably win out in that. Um, he's just, you know, he's he's the, the quiet one. He's more the laid back, you know. And then Richie is this, on the other end, the comedian. So he tries to make light of things. So it kind of is a, evens out um, the story between these two, um, if that makes any sense. But you have Pennywise, who is really just disguising itself from what the real horror is, the bigger horror of the story. Um, so it's a clown. And the clown is going to draw these kids in until they figure out they're in too far. And the thing of it is, is Pennywise, is, Pennywise plays on their fears, uh, which is a really great plot point to the story. Um, so whatever they're scared of, that's how he gets them wrapped around his finger, you know. And... So with your characters, you, you've got seven main characters. Mike is the one who stays behind when, when they feel like they've wrapped everything up. Um, Mike is the one that stays behind because they make this pact that if anything should ever happen again, Mike will make the phone calls. They'll all come. And if it comes back, 
they fight it again. And that's pretty much the whole, the story. Um, I, I also enjoyed the movies, like the first movie um, with Tim Curry, and then you got the new movie, which I only watched the first part. I never got to the second part of that, but the first part was done pretty well. This book has so much more than what they can show you, you know, so you're really missing out if you just watch the movie. I, I think the book just brings so much more to the story, so anyway, I'm rambling now. Um, it will always be my all-time favorite. It will always be the very first book I ever recommend. Um, so if you, if you want to read Start Stephen King, I wouldn't recommend it as a first time book. You might want something a little tamer, but anyway, yeah, there it is. It number two I'm recommending is Salem's Lot. Okay. Let me tell you right now, there's no particular order with the rest of these. Just, it's my number one. So all these are just in the mixed order. Anyway, so we got Salem's Lot. Salem's Lot was the second novel that Stephen King ever wrote. And in this book, you got Ben Mears, who is an author, I believe. And he goes back home. He goes back to, to Jerusalem's Lot or Salem's Lot. And there's the Marston House, I think it is. It's a mansion. And there's a lot of stuff that's said about this. Like a lot of evil, a lot of rumors spread. So Ben really wants to just go check it out himself. And he wants to go tour this this mansion um and then stuff just starts happening like these two boys go into the woods only one comes back evil is now upon his town and you gotta figure it out and i feel like there's not anything really said about this and there's even a movie the movie i believe or mini series and it came out in 1979 i want to say and yet you don't hear a whole lot about this. And this is one of my favorites. I've read this book a couple times and I enjoyed it just as much the second time that I read it. Um, I just, I feel like Ben is a, a great character and I don't want to tell you if you haven't read it, I don't want to tell you what the main factor is, which is I'm kind of beating around the bush on this. And just stuff happens that surrounds this mansion. We'll just say that. So yeah, this is another great book. Another one of my favorites. I'm going to keep saying that because they're all my favorites, but um, yeah, so this one's fantastic. You guys need to pick it up. I just actually got this book. I bought it from Sam's, I think, and I liked the cover. I liked this whole Salem's Lot sign right here. I really liked this edition. So this will be the one that's on my shelf. Okay, moving on. Sorry, you guys, I'm just railing on these books. The next one, Christine. You don't ever hear a single thing about this book. And I have to confess that I have not actually read this. I watched the movie. The movie was fantastic. It's You got Arnie who has buys this car, names it Christine, and it's just, it's a murderous car. It's, there's something connected to this car. It's a, an evil car, and that's pretty much the whole story. I am, hopefully, probably not this year, but hopefully next year, I will pick this up and actually read the book because I think it's going to have so much more than the movie did, and I absolutely love the movie. So I had to recommend this one. You don't hear anything about Christine at all, and I think it needs to be out there. So there's that one. The next one, um, Amber had included like short story collections and novella collections and stuff. So I'm going to include one novella connection collection from Stephen King. It's my all-time favorite one, and that was the Bachman books. He wrote as uh, Richard Bachman. And in this book, there are four novellas. You've got The Long Walk, Rage, The Running Man, and road work. I enjoyed every one of those. The Running Man was the, my least favorite of those. But there is a story behind one of these books, and that is Rage. Rage was first published in 1977. Stephen King was going to call it Getting It On or something like that. And in order for it to get published, the name was changed to Rage. And then the Bachman books actually came out in 1985. But Rage was published 
Um, and it was on a school shooting. Now, this was a very kind of meticulous. It wasn't like he goes in there, shoots them all up, and leaves. There, there was, um, I think he was in one classroom, and they were having this conversation. And it just, it was more than just, hey, pow, you're gone. Um, so, it, anyway, it was on a school shooting. And then, um, in the 80s and 90s, the school shootings were directly associated with rage. And Stephen King didn't like that, and he decided that he was not going to have rage in print any longer. So, even if you were to buy the Bachman books, which I'm, I'm sure you probably can't buy the Bachman books anymore. I don't know, maybe you can. But if you do, rage will not be in there. You cannot buy Rage Single. You can. I don't know about Kindles and eBooks. I'm. I probably should have looked that up, but I imagine that you can't get it that way either. Just because, you know, it, it had been associated, you know, to the '80s and the '90s school shootings whenever those happened. You know, and I just, I, I feel like it's ridiculous that he has to feel that way that because of his book. You know, because people just do people things. They just. They just act. We can't have a book be an excuse, you know? I don't know, maybe that's just me, but I feel like in this country today, everything has an excuse, There's an excuse for everything. Um, that's just my thoughts. But anyway, I just, I really hate that because I feel like Rage was really well written. And I feel like people that didn't get it then and they can't have it now are really missing out. So if you have a copy of Rage or you have a copy of the 1985, ba 1985 Bachman books, be thankful because you can no longer get Rage. So that's kind of heartbreaking to me because I really enjoyed that story. But anyway, like I said, I enjoyed most of these. Running Man was my least favorite, but the other three were fantastic. Um, I actually have the Long Walk, the Running Man, those both in separate paperbacks. I don't have road work separate, but I have the Bachman books and I'm happy that I have it and I will never get rid of it. So this one will probably never, I'll probably never get this in a hardback, the Bachman books. I'm, I'm probably sure, sure that they're not even selling them anymore. So anyway, be happy if you have rage because you can't get it anymore. Okay, next. This is book number five. This is Dolores Claiborne. Another one of my favorites, we're following Dolores, who is generally um, abused by her husband on a daily basis. Just always something happening. And I feel like she, I don't want to say too much, but I feel like she starts plotting for the eclipse. And that's what this is supposed to represent, this, this part right here. And then things go wonky. That's kind of the story. I don't want to give a whole lot away because it's not a big book at all. And I think you could really enjoy this. I don't believe there's a movie on this, but I kind of think there should be. But anyway, that's the Lord's Playboy. Loved it. Another favorite. The next one we got here is The Institute. Uh, I believe this was his 2019 release. Let me see. Do, 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 do. Yes. This was his 2019 release. I really love it, you guys. A lot of people say that his newer stuff now is just really... And and I don't feel that way. I feel like this was really well written. Um, this is kind of like a lab-based kind of story. You got this boy. What was his name? Um, Luke. Um, you got this boy, Luke, who was taken from his home. His parents are murdered. Of course, they lied to him. And tell him that they're not. He gets taken to the Institute and he's there with a bunch of other boys and girls and they've all got some kind of special power where it's you know telepathy, telekinesis, all that kind of stuff and of course let the tests commence and that sort of thing um, and that's all I'm gonna tell you. It was really good. I really enjoyed Luke's character um, there's lots of characters in here to love or hate or what have you, but this was really good. Again, for being a new release, you'd think this would be talked about more, and I don't feel like it is. I just, I don't feel like people talk about it. So I wanted to put that on this list. 
The next one we got here is The Dark Half by Stephen King. I'm giving you a little peek into my November book haul because this is one of them. I found this very beautiful first edition at Recycled Books, and I was super excited to find this. Of course, I had it in paperback. Um, in this book, our main character's name is Thad, and Thad is an author. I feel like he's got a lot of writers in his books. But for years and years, he wrote under the name of George Stark, and his books were very murderous, villainous books, and he just kept writing under George Stark's name. Um, and then he finally puts him to rest, and he can now write under his own name. But then something happens. There's a murder in the town, and his fingerprints are found everywhere, and they don't understand why. So, um... That's all I'm going to tell you. This is another great book that people just don't talk about. Um, I have only read this book one time, though, but I feel like I really want to revisit it. I feel like I really want to read it again because, you know, a lot of times when it's been a long time since you've read it, so it's been a long time since I've read it, you forget great details and stuff that are in the book. So I really feel like I want to revisit. So we'll see. Maybe I will do that in the next couple months or so. But that's the dark half. Another great one, guys. The next one we've got here is 112263. Another really, really good story. If you guys like anything on the history of JFK, the assassination, and all of this, you would really enjoy this book. This is not horror at all by any means. You've got this man who gets to go back in time because he wants to change it. He doesn't want JFK to be assassinated. And... Um, that was the point of him going back in time. That is all I'm going to tell you because I could go on and on and on about this book. There is a mini series on this. I started watching it and I just thought it was horrendous and I did not finish watching it. Now, if you haven't read the book, then it will probably be good to you. You know, you'll probably enjoy it a lot. Um, but I feel like this will give so much more. Um, another in my top five guys I can't help it I absolutely love this story it is a big one it's a chunker but it's so worth the read especially if you like all the history surrounding JFK and the assassination this has got King's spin on it so that makes it great in itself the next book here that nobody talks about and that is the cycle of the werewolf I actually received this book from a viewer and now a great friend, Andrea, she had sent me a package and this was in it. And huh, um, she also sent me the It book, the hardback on It too. But this one I read years and years ago when I lived in Indiana. And that's been 20 plus years ago was the first time that I read this book. Now this one um, is illustrated by Bernie Wrightson. Very small. Great illustrations though in here. Um, and this is really it's a book on the cycle of the werewolf and in this town every cycle every full moon cycle someone is murdered by yours truly here the the werewolf uh, so good little you could probably read this in a couple hours it's fantastic and i did read this again shortly after i received it from andrea i think i read it within that week but yeah i got it marked off on july so that must have been my favorite portion of the book so i really do want to read this again it's a very quick read and i absolutely love it nobody talks about it the illustrations are fabulous if you want to pick up something quick and easy to read this one if you don't mind horror because there's some horror in that one okay the next one we got here is the tommy knockers nobody talks about this it's probably not one of my most favorite books but I did enjoy it. Um, in this book, you got Roberta, who, a writer. Um, she, I think she just came back into town. I'm not sure, or if she just, um, no, it, just, it doesn't say that she just moved back into town, but it's a small New England town, and she's going into the forest behind her house. She needs to get some firewood. She has a shovel, and she starts digging around in the ground, and she hits something metal. Um, at first, she just thinks it's like, you know, maybe it's a can of some kind, but it was very solid. 
um, she starts digging and starts unearthing part of this. And then she gets her friend Jim Gardner to start helping her. They unearth a ship that is millions of years old. And that's all I'm going to tell you. It was really good. I mean, like I said, not the top favorite, but I did enjoy it. I've read it twice because I read it with somebody else that wanted to read it. They wanted to do a buddy read on it. And so this is another one I think I might want to revisit to see if I like it less or like it more than I liked it the first time because it's been a long time since I've read this one. But yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a reread in my future of the Tommyknockers. The next one we got here is Billy Summers. This was Stephen King's 2021 release. And it was fantastic, you guys. I love Billy so much. I read this as a reread with a couple of friends in group. And it's fantastic. You got Billy, who was an Iraqi vet at one time. And he was really good at shooting. I don't know if it said he was a sharpshooter. I don't remember that. But now he is a killer for hire. And he's hired to kill so-and-so. And... -so, and this is pretty much the story of that. You guys will fall in love with Billy. I just, I feel like he's such a great character, especially for being one of, you know, King's new releases where people, you know, they're saying that his new books aren't good, not like his old books, and I disagree. So yeah, um, this is not really a horror. It's more of a thriller. So I highly recommend this one. The next one we've got here is Misery. And you guys know I just read this book last month. Um, this was another one where I just watched the movie and I finally got around to reading the book. You guys, the apprehension I felt reading this book because Annie Wilkes was just on like the edge of a psychotic break, you know. And here's Paul, this writer. He gets in this accident. Annie finds him. He's an author, again, a writer. And he's got this misery series. This is her, his character and he killed her off. And Annie says... No, no, no. He says, you are going to write her back to life. And that is the story. He has to do her bidding or else. So Annie is just written so well, you guys. Like you, the imagery. Oh my goodness. It's just, you don't even need the movie. Read the book and you'll actually see it play out in your head. Fantastic. I have to recommend this one. Um, for just reading it just now, just last month, after watching the movie. The movie was good, but you don't need it. Not if you read this. Fantastic. And my last book, you guys, to recommend is Dr. Sleep. This is the prequel to The Shining. A very late prequel to The Shining. Um, this was a 2015 this came out in 2015, so it came out quite a bit later than The Shining, and a lot of people did not like this because I feel like they were thinking The Shining the whole time. The hotel, Jack's descent into insanity, this is actually about Jack's son Danny. He is now a middle-aged man, and he's trying to save a little girl from these murderous paranormal entities. And that's pretty much the story. So I feel like people were wanting to go back to the hotel again. And then, you know, in The Shining, there was paranormal, paranormal elements in that book. And same with this one. But we're focusing on Danny now because that's what the whole thing was about. The Shining. And Danny has The Shining. So go into this book. Don't even imagine The Shining itself. Just go and just, just enjoy the story. Just become Danny. That's that's the whole moral of the story. Um, this is Danny, not Jack. It's so good. Very, very, very good. Came out much later. I think when it does come out so much after later after the first book, you can kind of erase that and then just, you know, go in this with an open mind and... I, that's where I feel people didn't like it as much because it didn't reflect as much on the hotel and Jack and all that. So, anyway, it was fantastic, you guys. I love that book. And that is my top 13 recommended books for you guys. Um, hopefully between this video and watching Amber's video, if you have never read Stephen King, maybe you can find something to read that you can enjoy. 
I feel like we gave you a nice amount of books to kind of pique your interests. So this was my top 13, guys. For, don't forget to go visit Amber's top 13 because she's got some great ones as well. I try not to duplicate. I know I duplicated it, but I think that was the only one I duplicated. Um, but anyway, that is it, guys. Thanks, Amber, for sharing your video, and you made me think. But I hope you guys are enjoying spook season. I know I am. But thanks for staying tuned, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.